I'm sure we talked about it in this class, in, in all my classes, that I think it's really important for us to look at mistakes that are made, uh, common mistakes that are made by students, and uh, learn from them. Okay? The hope is that you'll see your mistake, mistakes that you make, and then you'll remember those. We'll get logged away in a, in a, a significant part of your brain when you try to do something like that again. Do remember we talked about that? Okay? Uh, so that's, like I said, that's an important thing to me. I think that's really uh, a significant and uh, a good thing to do. Um, and at the conference that I went to on Thursday, Friday, uh, a woman presented about some research that was done on this, this very idea. And that, in fact, that is important to do. Um, and gave us some uh, information on the research that they did, how to make it significant. So we're going to try and do it that way. All right. So. Uh, one of the things is to, to have it worked out. I'm going to show you a worked out example that somebody did with a mistake. I'm going to tell you what the mistake was. I'm going to ask you in one way or another through my questions over here to um, say why it's a mistake. Not what the mistake is because I, I identify that, but to uh, say why it's a mistake. And then through our discussion, we'll, we'll see uh, how to correct that mistake. So. It'll come up, you'll see this red X here means they got it correct. I might show you a correct example, or I might show you an incorrect example, but a big red X would mean it's incorrect, okay? And uh, what I want you to do is just, in your notes, write, actually write words. Don't just wait until I start talking again, but actually write words in response to this question, okay? So answer this question, uh, why is Rogers attempt to divide by 5, 6 incorrect? Okay, let's talk about it. So, as Roger tried to divide by 5, 6, what did he do wrong? Yeah. Um, he should have taken 5, 6 divided by 6 along with the 5. I mean, times 6 over 5 okay. to start the equation instead of trying to do it a different way. Do it a different way? What do you mean by that? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm almost positive I got this right. So, okay. I mean, it shouldn't he have gone 5, 6 divided by 6, I mean, any time 6 over 5 mm -hmm. first, and instead of going, trying to do, I don't know. It's okay, go on. Instead of doing what? Instead of 5, 6 divided by 5, 6? Yeah. Okay. Anybody want to respond to it? Same thing, okay, so it's the same thing, right? Divide by 5, 6 or multiply by 6 fifths, it's the same thing. Um, so this went okay, didn't it? This part went okay. Divide by five, yeah. six, that's okay. So what, what went wrong then? Derek? Divide by the reciprocal. The reciprocal, right? So we divide by five, six, five, six, we don't multiply by five, six. It's not the same thing, okay? But I see it all the time. That's why I've, I've included it in, uh, in what we're doing today. So we shouldn't have multiplied by five, six. Roger shouldn't have multiplied by five, six. Should have multiplied by six fifths. Okay, so you can write that down. Should have multiplied by the reciprocal. Okay, so what should he get when he actually does do 15 divided by 5, 6? One. One? 15 divided by 5, 6? You should get one here. Oh, wait. Let's see, 15. Divided by 5, 6, we said we multiply by the reciprocal. That's 15 over 1 times 6 fifths. Cancels the, those two out. That leaves a 3 there. 3 times 6 is 18. Should get 18. Okay. That's generally what it looks like. I'm gonna, we're going to go through the quiz in this way from now on. Okay. Uh, this majority of the time. So I just want you to do this again. I want you to write down on your papers and your notes why is negative 27 incorrect. This guy right here, this negative 27. Take a look where you got it from and what makes it incorrect. So 
three, let's back up one step before this question. Where did negative 27 come from? How did they, like, what is the rationale behind that? If any. David? Winky got it from adding positive 5 to a negative 32, but they are not the same because that is a 5. I don't know if that term is, but it's a 5 times k and 32 is just a plain. Can you help Nathan out? They're not what? Yeah. Well, so that's what this is going to address. But this, first thing, negative 27 is incorrect because, well, because uh, negative 32 and 5k are not like terms. Okay. Now, this is a common mistake that I see a lot of people make. They, they see that there's two separate variable terms, and they try to deal with that somehow. And using the previous experience, uh, maybe 13k minus 5, they try to get, ri get rid of that negative 5 thing, um, and combine it with the other side somehow, and leave just one variable on one side. Okay. But while, well, let me ask you this, can you add 5k to both sides? Can you do it, or can't you? Yeah. Cannot. It is impossible to do. No. Is it possible to do? Yes. Is it legal to do? Could you do it? Yeah. Is it the best idea? No. No, it's not the best idea. But you can do it. Okay. That's one thing that I want to leave you with that I did not pick up in algebra. I thought there was one way to do it. You did it right or you did it wrong. Okay. The only thing you can do wrong is, well, to do different things to both sides. All right. As far as an equation is concerned. Of course, putting things together that aren't like terms, that would be incorrect as well. That's, that's the previous stuff. We, we've talked about that already. All right. But it's a common mistake because there's this, what do I do? What do I do with these two variable terms? Okay. And the answer would be? Combine like terms. You have two things. They are the same thing. They're the same kind of thing, right? They're both Ks. All right. So would you choose a different first step? Yeah. Yeah. Adding 5K, legal. Not the best idea. So combine like terms. So yes, combine like terms. Liker terms? Just regular like terms. Like terms. <laughs> okay, so let's give us negative 32 equals 8k. K equals negative 4 if we divide by 8 of both sides. So again, adding 5k, not wrong. But weird. Okay. Weird thing to do. Weird's not bad. This is weird. All right. So first, I subtracted 3.2 on both sides, get to this step right here, and then divide by 2.5. So just tell me, that would be, what would you do differently? That's not what I want to know right now. What I want to know is why would dividing by 2.5 maybe not be the best idea? the most efficient idea or whatever. So why wouldn't it be the thing that you would do if you would do something else? Pick up your pencils. Come on now. Pick up your pencils and write some stuff on those papers. And you use your own words and you verbalize it. And then you not only verbalize it in your brain, but you write it down in the paper. It activates several different modes of your brain. Okay, it engages them all and it affects you more significantly. It's up to you. I'm not gonna take your hand, hold your hand, make you write something, but I will keep saying it until you do write something. So before we look at this question, answer this question together, can you divide both sides by 2.5? Yes. Yes, you can. You're allowed to do whatever you want, right? The sky's the limit. As long as you do what? There's one thing that has to happen if you, if you do something. You have to maintain the equality of both sides, which means you have to do the same thing to both sides. If you divide one side by 2.5, do it to the other side. So in this step, with the way it's written, right, they are doing the same thing on both sides. Now, the step after that might reveal like they have a misunderstanding of what 
actually should happen here, right? What it actually means to divide by 2.5. Right. So how would we phrase this? How would we answer this? Why is dividing by 2.5 maybe not the best idea here? Because it won't, would I, because I won't cancel out the 2.5. It wouldn't cancel out that division by 2.5. Dividing this by 2.5 does not cancel out the 2.5. Common mistake, right? Maybe because we're not quite sure what to do, but we do know that if it was 2.5 times x, then we would divide by 2.5, and for a loss of Anything else better to do, just go ahead and do that and hope for the best, right? Um, so the reason why it's not good is because uh, it doesn't cancel. It doesn't cancel the 2.5 that we're trying to cancel out. What does it do? What would you get if you divided x over 2.5 by 2.5? did do that. Oftentimes this confusion about what goes where and what combines with what, what numbers interact with which other numbers, when we're dividing fractions by numbers or numbers by other fractions or whatever. So let's, let's make heads or tails of the situation, right? What should happen? Okay, so there's, there's a little bit of confusion about that, okay? Is it, and it makes a difference, okay? Is it x, is it x divided by 2.5 divided by 2.5, or is it x divided by 2.5 over 2.5? Okay. This way, 2.5 over 2.5 is 1, that's true. That would, that would be x over 1, wouldn't it? That would just be x. Okay. But the number that we started with was x over 2.5. And x over 2.5, what we're trying to do, the only new thing like we're introducing to this problem is dividing by 2.5 on both sides. Okay. So this is what we're doing. We're dividing this side, x over 2.5, by 2.5. Okay. So there lies maybe a different kind of confusion about it why this looks like it's going to collapse. Right? It's not just 2.5 that's getting divided by 2.5. It's this whole thing that's getting divided by 2.5. Okay. So okay, let's get rid of uh, these. And we'll just make it much more prominent. We're dividing the number x over 2.5 by 2.5. Yeah, try one of these. Let's. say no, but maybe it's not completely obvious. But if we, what's that? You're saying your value? X divided by one? By one? Okay. So, um, let, me, let me just bring those back up. These are, these are two different things, okay? The order that I do these in is important, and it makes a difference. Just like subtraction, I can't do the subtraction of, of two numbers in any order that I want. Five minus three is not the same as three minus five. Okay? And x divided by 2.5, divided by 2.5 is not the same as x divided by 2.5 over 2.5. This right here is one, this is x over one. This is different. Okay? These are two different things. I'm doing division in a different order. Here I'm dividing these two and then dividing uh, x by the result. Here I'm dividing x by 2.5 first and then dividing that result by 2.5. Different, very different. Okay. And again, this is the one we're doing. This is what we started with. We started with x over 2.5, right? So in this step, the idea the person had was to divide by 2.5. All right. Let's go back to our first one. Right. Dividing by a fraction, multiply by the reciprocal. We can look at any number as a fraction and then make sure that we're doing this division correctly by multiplying by the reciprocal. And any number you see, including 2.5, even though it's a decimal, we can write it as over 1. Okay. Now things become a little bit clearer because we have a fraction divided by a fraction. And now we can be sure that we're, when we divide by 2.5 over 1, to make sure things line up the way that they ought to, instead of dividing by 2.5 over 1, we could 
Multiply. Multiply by what? 2.5. What's that? 2.5. 2.5 over 1 is what it is. Oh. You want to multiply by the reciprocal, right? Yeah. 1 over 2.5. Okay, so x over 2.5 times 1 over 2.5. By doing this, by writing it this way, we're sure everything is where it's supposed to be. Right? Multiplying fractions, and very straightforward. You multiply straight across. Okay? Dividing is a little not as clear, not as straightforward. So we take a division problem involving fractions and turn it into a multiplication involving fractions. It becomes a lot more clear. We can see that we're not dividing 2.5 by 2.5. It's really the denominator 2.5 times 2.5. We're going to divide by 2.5. It's the same as multiplying by 1 over 2.5. So here we get x over 2.5 times 2.5, which is what? What's 2.5 times 2.5? 6.25? Okay. Well, there it is, right? There's another way to say what we just said. Because it doesn't cancel out the 2.5. Dividing this by 2.5 actually multiplies the 2.5 by 2.5, and you just get x over 6.25, which didn't help you really at all. Didn't make it any better. It made it kind of even a nastier looking decimal. Okay? So what would you have done instead? Instead of dividing by 2.5, trying to cancel out that 2.5, what would you have done instead? Connor? Instead of dividing by 2.5, multiply by 2.5. Right? Multiply by 2.5 on both sides. So x over 2.5, multiply by 2.5 over 1, if you like that, if that's helpful. You see the cancellation that we were looking for. Over here we get 1.4 times 2.5, which is 1.4 times 2.5. Takes one second to write that in. What's that? 3.5. 3.5. Thank you very much. 3.5. So don't let this confuse you here. We're taking the number x over 2.5 and dividing by 2.5. And if we write that as a multiplication of two fractions, it becomes obvious, oh, when I take a fraction I divide it by just a number, it actually turns out I'm multiplying the denominator by that number. All right? So Susan did subtract 6 correctly from both sides. So First question, why can't Susan just subtract 6 from inside the parentheses? Go ahead, write. Get some kind of answer, some kind of uh, rationale. What I'm saying there. Say, why can't you just subtract 6 from inside those parentheses and get rid of that 6? Any kind of reason? Do I answer? Um, because the numbers, the numbers in the parentheses are in the parentheses for a reason. For a reason? What reason are they in there for? To do them first before everything else. To do them first. And what's happening to the things in the parentheses that needs to happen first? 
Um, Multiplication by what? Three. By three, okay. Or by negative three, depending on how you look at it, right? We could distribute it, a positive three that subtracts the whole thing or distribute a negative three and have the, the result, yeah? So yeah, they're, they're in a parentheses for a reason. That's a good way to put it. And the thing that they're being grouped together for, the purpose of those parentheses is to be multiplied by three, okay? And that didn't happen, right? And so subtracting six is to subtract something that, well, it's not quite right, right? That's not really a six. It's not really worth six. It's actually worth something else. It's worth whatever it is after what's supposed to happen to it happens. Okay, so uh, because it's in the parentheses for a reason. Okay, and that reason is to be multiplied by, let's say, negative. That's the reason it's there. All right. So subtracting six, we're treating like, like this is just six, and it can just go away. What's it actually worth? What is that six actually worth on that side of the equation? Yeah? Uh, negative three. Negative 18, right? If, you, if, we, if we do uh, take this as the, the thing that's supposed to be multiplied by that parentheses, then it would be worth negative 18. It's just kind of a, another way to look at. It's not six you're, you're, you should subtract. If you're going to subtract uh, this constant here, it needs to be the full constant, which is negative 18. But really, the easiest thing to do here, the easiest way to keep this all straight is to take what as your first step? Yes? Distribute. Do the distributive property. Distribute that negative three. That would probably be the easiest thing to do. So I'll just kind of separate that out. So um, we have 27 equals 3c minus 18 plus 6c. So distribute a negative three to a negative two. Be careful of that negative. That's one of the big mistakes as well. Uh, so we'll add 18 to both sides. And we get 40. 5 equals 9c, so 9 equals 5, or c, not 9c, equals 5 if we divide by 9 both sides. All right. So you can see by the big green check mark, this is actually an example of a correctly worked out solution. So, Joel. Solve the equation correctly. And what was Joel's first step? Even. Distributive property. Use the distributive property to distribute the print the, to distribute the fraction into the parentheses. Uh, you can see he did that correctly by thinking of this is a nine over one and multiplying it straight across. So eighteen over five right there. This also needs to be multiplied by two fifths. All right. So this is negative two over one. So two times two is four, five times the denominator of one here would be five. Subtract 18 fifths, become the denominator, all that kind of stuff, did everything right, okay? Combine the numbers correctly, did the same thing on both sides, all that kind of stuff, all right? So he distributed first. Okay, can you think of a faster or a simpler way to start this problem? Yeah, Lily. Can you just take like two fifths divided by like like the seven parentheses and then just divide it by negative fourteen? Like, yeah. Divide, divide this by something. Yeah. By what? Two fifths. Like, divide this by two fifths. Yeah. And divide this by two fifths as well. Yeah. Okay. So on this side, if we divide this by two fifths, here I'll get the a different color here. Um, so two fifths times 9 minus 2b, divide by 2 fifths, divide this by 2, 2 fifths, that's a 4, 14. So on this side, uh, we've got a factor of 2 fifths and a factor of 2 fifths. 2 fifths divided by 2 fifths is 1. We have 1 times 
9 minus 2b. Okay. On this side, multiply by the reciprocal. We're all experts at that. Multiply by the reciprocal. Um, just cancel out. Right? We get a negative 7 here. Negative 7 times 5 is negative 35. Equals 9 minus 2b. Okay. Subtract 9, we get negative 44. Equals negative 2b. Divide by negative 2b is equal to 22. So we do get the same answer, but uh, maybe a little faster, depending on how you look at it. It's, uh, I would say it's easier, because we're not having to find common denominators and stuff like that. Um, so a little simpler. So we'll divide by 2 fifths on both sides. That way we don't have to worry about distributing this, this fraction and then uh, finding common denominators and all that kind of thing. Well, hopefully, from my experience, these have been mistakes that I've seen. Hopefully you saw maybe a mistake that you made up here. And you know, you'll think twice about it next time. You'll, you'll think of Joel. And, uh, and maybe maybe that corrects his mistake because he didn't make a mistake, but maybe you do it better than he did, go faster. Or you'll think of Susan and the fact that she tried to subtract something out of the parentheses and you just can't do that. It's not even worth six. It's worth negative eighteen. It's maybe distribute before you start doing stuff like that. All right. So we're gonna get on a regular basis, if not every time, uh, start up by looking at people's mistakes as they try to do these homework problems. All right. Are there any other questions from similar part of the homework? Eric? Uh, number 39 on 3.3. 39, thank you very much. Very specific. Exact. Perfect. See the whole thing. Uh, so they've revealed to you the like the, the whole thing there in a picture. They've drawn everything out in a picture. It's a little blurry, but we, we, we can still read it. Um, so you have three equally uh, sized posters on a 13 and a half foot wall. Each uh, distance on the outside is three feet. Um, each poster is two feet wide. So just looking at this picture, we can see we don't know what this is. Um, hopefully those are the same distance between posters. So we'll, we'll read the problem and see if that's what we're going to do. So you want to hang three equally sized post, uh, travel posters on the wall in your room so that the posters on the ends are uh, three feet from the ends of the wall. You got that there. You want the spacing between posters to be equal, OK, meaning we can call this the same thing, right? This is x, and if this is x, so is this, right? The spacing between them is exactly the same. However many feet this is, this is the same amount of feet. We call them both x. We call them x and y, but it turns out they're the same, so we can just call them both x. Um, how much space would you leave between the posters? And they, you know, like we said, gave you a bunch of information here. All right. So first, let's write the equation that represents this uh, this scenario. And then we solve for x. Okay. So what what equation can we write? What can we put on either side of the equation? Derek? Thirteen and a half could go on one side. Thirteen and a half could go on one side. Okay. And what are we going to do on this side? That's going to equal thirteen and a half feet. What about this diagram is equal to 13 and a half feet? Derek, the one who asked the question? Yeah. Would you add uh, uh, the, how much space is between the uh, picture and the uh, 
three, two, 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 and three. If we add three, two, 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 and three, yeah. and we can just add those in our heads, right? So I got a five and a five of 10, 12 feet, right? Well, that's clearly not equal to 13 and a half feet, right? There's a little bit more. What else is missing? Uh, one and a half feet. One and a half feet, yes. Yes, one and a half feet. But, Derek? Like, we, we need to add in X, yeah? Okay. So, Hildy, of course, your, your, your foot and a half is going to come in to play in here just a second. Right? But what we need to do is add on two X's, right? 13, or we could do, not 13, 3 plus 2 plus X plus 2 plus X plus 2 plus 3 should add up to 13.5. So if we add all those up, all the constants added up to 12. Uh, if we add an x and an x, you get 2x. That's the definition of 2x is x plus x. So now we just solve for x. Right? Hildy did the first step already, right? Subtracting 12 on both sides. So 2x equals, you gotta remember what we're in, 1.5 feet. Or you can switch it over to inches if you want to, 18 inches, right? Two different people doing two uh, different equations that are equivalent to each other. Then we solve for x by doing what? Okay, if we have 18 inches, we'll divide both sides by 2. x is equal to 9 inches. Or for over here, we could also divide this by 2. x is equal to 0.75 inches, or 0.75, excuse me, feet. There you go, just to set up the equation and solve for x. Yeah. I got the same answer, but I don't think mine was the equation mm -hmm. at all. Is that okay? I well, tried, but it just made more sense to do it. I, I couldn't figure out how to do an equation. Um, so you you knew that this would have to be a foot and a half total, mm -hmm. and you just divided by two. Mm -hmm. But you did everything. You did all the stuff that you would do for an equation, but you didn't write the equation. Uh -huh. Now. Don't know how to write an equation, well, get on board. Well, I think okay. just, I tried, but it looks fun. You tried? Okay, what do you want to write? <laughs> I don't think that makes any sense. You called it an equation. Two times three, you got two three thirds. Two two thirds. Six two thirds. Six two A. As long as you can write something that has an equal sign and both sides are equal, that's true, right? Then you're on your way. Maybe the equation that you would write would just be 2x equals 1.5 feet because that, becomes, that comes immediately to you. I know that I have two equal distances that I'm adding up. They add up to one and a half feet. So I'm just going to divide that by two. Okay? But I would encourage you, this is a simple problem that you could do mostly in your head, and not write anything down, and still find 0.75 feet or nine inches. Um, but again, I would encourage you to begin the practice of writing down equations, because at some point, there will be something that's not so obvious as to what it has, especially when you start combining uh, linear feet and area, things like that, that's gonna not be so clear. You have to actually set up an equation and solve for x in order to get at what you're looking for. Any other questions? Okay, let's pass in the homework, please. Thank you. And see how we might work our way up to what we're doing today. Right, so I want you to solve this as soon as I put it up here, just start working on it. Go ahead and work on that. Solve for x. What's the idea? 3.4, well, this isn't 3.4. This is actually from 3.3. Or 3.4. Yeah, that's right. I don't know. It's from a previous section. It's just one, one layer away from. 
all X's. Okay. Yes. So what's uh, what's a step one that we can take, Trevor? Combine like term. Combine like term. Boom. That's it. Allow us to combine like term. On this gravestone, it'll say combine like term. Whoa, that's dedication. Right? Yeah. A lot of other stuff to be there too. It'll be big. It'll be really tall. I have lots of stuff in there. David. Now you add five to both sides. Add five to both sides. Forty equals negative five nice. x. Somebody else? Yeah. Negative five. Negative five. <laughs> X is negative eight. <laughs> All right. So, but let's back up here. Why combine the terms? Why not uh, add seven X to both sides? Because that's not cool. Well, trying to get all the variables on one side. You're trying to get the variables all on one side. Okay, so there it is. Boom. Our mantra for today. Get all the variables on one side. Okay. Now, it take a little bit of an issue with this, but not, not that big an issue. We're not really moving things from one side to the other, right? Uh, we cancel things out. Like we cancel out this negative five. The negative five plus five is zero, and over here we just have to do the same thing. We're not moving it. Right? We're not taking this and moving it over there. In fact, this is the complete opposite of what that was. This is negative five, this is positive five. Okay. It's not so much moving, though that's a, a natural way to feel, I would think. Okay. So not moving, but canceling it on one side and, uh, and doing the same to the other side. This is number three from 3.4, 8t plus 5 equals 60 plus 1. What do you guys hear? Can you come up with an idea on your own? And so I asked uh, why we don't add 7 x to both sides, and, and somebody said, what did they say? We don't add 7 x to both sides here because what? We like, like the variables in one place. We like to collect all the variables together, if possible. Megan? Wouldn't she like subtract 
Yeah. First, I'll ask, can we? Can we subtract 16 yes. from both sides? Yeah. We can do anything we want to both sides. Can we do it the other way? Can we subtract 18 from both sides? Yeah. yeah. We can do whatever we want as long as we do it to both sides. Now let's see what happens. Okay. Don't ask yourself what you uh, are supposed to do or what you can do. What you can do is anything you want as long as you do it to both sides. Okay. All right. So what is 16 minus 16? Zero. 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 There's no more t's on this side. All that's left is a one. Okay. Can we put these together? Yeah. Yeah. They're like terms. Yeah. Eight t minus sixty is two t. Yeah. Plus five equals one. Minus five. Now it looks like a normal equation, a two-step equation, if you will. Right. Remember those last two steps I said? Typically, the last two steps of solving the equation look like this. Get rid of the constant. Divide by the coefficient. Get rid of the constant, divide by the coefficient, there it is. Okay. So I saw a lot of common things out there. I'm going to just leave it alone until next time. Some, some people dividing by 8 on both sides or you try to combine things that aren't like terms or stuff like that. So there it is, right? If, if, it, if you didn't have an inclination to do that, to uh, cancel out the t's on one side and you know, do the same thing on the other side, combine like terms, um, maybe now it's an idea. Now that um, little spark is in your brain now. Number 10. What do we have to do first? Is that a trick? Question? What do we have to do first? We should do. Do you have to do that? No. 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 Okay, so it's a trick question. You don't have to. What do you do first? Distribute it. 5h plus 7 equals 2h plus 2. Distribute the 2 to both. Three. What? 
What is that? H equals three. What what is three? H. A number. This H is a number. <laughs> Three is H, three is a number, that's true. What's the importance of three in this problem? It what? It is equal to H, we did say that already. Okay. In this problem, what's the importance of three? The importance of three, when you compare it to like five, five is not very important to this equation. Seven is not very important. What do we call three? Okay. There's a special word for it. Final product. Final product. would be something where you multiply two numbers together. It's not okay, answer. That's kind of kind of a cop out, but uh, you say answer is another word. It's very specific. It's a math word. Don't say. Start with S. Another hint. That's <laughs> it's the solution. <laughs> Your brother did <laughs> All right. I wouldn't spend time on this if I didn't think it was important. Okay. So don't just wait around for me to say important things. I always say important things. Pay attention always. All right. So three is the solution. What does that mean? What is the solution? What does it mean that three is the solution to this equation? It's the answer. I'm just spitballing here. It's what you got. It's what you got. Well, we're trying to solve this equation, right? Yeah. We're trying to find, from the very beginning, we're trying to find the solution. And we go through these steps and we found it, but what significance is this? The solution is like if you were to replace that with H, you get it was, it was even. Both sides would be even. That's it. If you don't know that, if you're not paying attention, you should probably pay attention to what Hildy just said. Can you say it again, Hildy? Um, the solution is if you replace if you replace like H with the solution, you yeah. both sides of B. Exactly it, right? So the solution is a number. A number uh, that um, if say substitute. I'm trying to. Right, say it kind of the way Hildy said it. If substituted for, in this problem, for H, both sides would, the high school would, be equal. So we put 3 there, we got 15 minus 7 is 8. And we got uh, 3 here, 3 plus 1 is 4, 2 times 4 is also 8. Both sides of the equation are equal. So from the very beginning, that's what we were looking for. We were looking for that, that value of h, that if we put that number in there for h, uh, both sides would be equal. What is that value? Could you guys stop? Whoever is making sounds, as soon as I turn around, it's really freaking annoying. So stop. It's distracting. It's not helpful. Thank you. Derek, what is your question? Uh, can we do one of these problems with like a fraction? Um, sure. Let's do one with a fraction. What's a, a choice for a first step? Ethan? Distributed property. Okay, distributed property. Well, we got two places we could do that. Should we do both? Yes. Okay, do both. Wait. Wait? Well, yeah, never mind. Just do the one. Okay, let's do both. Okay. Uh, well, let's do 3 fifths times 5 over 1 plus 3 fifths times 10 over 1 just to make it. Possible to follow here. Five scans, we get three plus these scans. This is two. Three times two is six, so we get six n. Okay, we so said we did distribute. Oh, I have a question. Why don't you press that for? That's how long we're going to stay after class because people can't stop talking. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, couldn't it just be like uh, take three over five times five over one? Yeah. 
5 over 3 and get 5 plus 10 in? Or would that not work? Because it comes out the same as the other side. Um, so you're saying multiply this side by 5 thirds? Uh, yeah. Multiply this side by 5 thirds? No, just take 3 over 5 times 5 thirds. Like, get rid of it? Does that even work? So I don't know, I might have made it down. If we multiply by 5 thirds, <laughs> then, well, that, you know, we get 15 over 15, and that becomes 1 times 5 plus 10 in. Okay. But, can we just do that? You just you just introduce this new number, this new operation. You multiply this side by five thirds, which means you also need to multiply the other side by five. Oh, I've been doing that on all the time. So yeah, you can multiply by five thirds if you multiply both sides by five thirds. If we do that, if we multiply this by five thirds, that'll turn out not to be so great because we'll have uh, twenty five over three. Uh, but it's not a bad idea. We have done that in the past, but you didn't mean to do so close to my whole side. Both sides. Same thing on both sides. Man, I'll never make that mistake again. Right? That's all that matters. Okay, so did we distribute correctly? We distribute that, you know, distribute five correctly, distribute three tests correctly. If we didn't, we should say something. We should, we should halt. Well, that's what we did. We did it. We've done it. Now what? Get the ends on one side. Okay, how do you how would you do that? Um I would subtract six or no add five to the right side. Or yeah. subtract yeah. subtract five. Subtract five? Yeah. Just five? Okay, so five n plus five equals negative two plus six n. That's what you do first? Uh, I meant subtract 5n. Oh, that's different. Minus 5n. So this is 0 now, 10 equals negative 2n plus 6n plus 3. I guess we should put that plus 3. Uh, no. We just mix that up. Uh, n plus 3. 6n minus 5n is 1n plus 3. Just subtract the 5n from both sides. 6n minus 5n is n plus 3. Why is the minus 5 minus 3? It doesn't really matter. The reason it's there is because I was trying to clarify things with Ethan, but it doesn't matter. Okay, then subtract 3 on both sides, and n is 7. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah? Um, I did it like opposite. So if I, if I did like minus 6n and then did that and I got negative 1n plus 10 plus 3 and then I did the math after that, will I get it wrong? No, you'll get it. You'll get it right. Negative n equals, uh, or negative n plus 10, you said? Um, plus 10 equals 3? Yes. So then we'll subtract 10 on both sides. And we'll get negative n equals negative 7. And we'll divide by negative 1 on both sides and get n is equal to positive 7. So it's all the same. So if you get fractions, just treat them like any other number. I, admittedly, it's not always going to work out that the denominator gets canceled when you distribute it. Um, you may have to deal with it and find common denominators. But that's it. That's going to be the only difference. Just a little messier to work with. Um, it's 
was. Is this working out differently than other problems we've done? Just being weird? Yeah. Well, kind of, but I mean, it's all kind of Ah. Think it through. <laughs> think it through? I think I think. Okay, well, let's start. Let's think it through. So what would you do first? Uh, I take five and, yeah. And distribute it? Yep. Okay. Pretty standard. Negative 15 n plus 10. What's next? Fifteen n both sides, and then you'll end up with two n. Two n, mm. yeah. because of this two. Yeah. What's negative fifteen n plus fifteen n? Zero. So what's left is just two, the number two. Over here, also there's nothing. Equals ten. Does it? Does two equal ten? Okay, so this is a false statement. It is a statement. It's saying 2 is 10. 2 is 10. 2 is not 10. It's a false statement. Okay, really? What is? Never mind. Ethan? So for the answer, if we get a problem like this on our homework, you just want to split down like false? Well, there's a way to fix it. Well, we're going to talk about the solutions. How do you fix it? Okay. When I did it, I did 2 equals n plus 10, and then I just subtracted 10 from you 2 n. Where'd you get the n on this side? Yeah. Just because there's the n there, I figured, why not? <laughs> well, why not is because we added 15 n on this side to cancel out this negative 15 n, and it did cancel it out, it came to 0. And we did the same thing over here, we added 15 n on the other side, which also happened to eliminate all of the n's, leaving 0 n's. They're all gone. Why does your own question? side and zero for the ends on this side and we're just left with 2 equals 10. Apparently for this to work out, for this to be true, 2 would have to be the same as 10. Which when we, we get down to it and we, we start just looking at numbers that we're familiar with, you know that 2 is not equal to 10 and never could be equal to 10. The number 2 can never be 10. We can do something to it we get up to 10 from 2 but 2 can't be 10. Yeah. But then 2 wouldn't be 2, it would be 10. 2, the number 2, cannot be the number 10. 2 plus 8 can be 10 because 2 plus 8 is 10. But 2 itself cannot be equal to 10. Okay, if 2 were equal to 10, all of math would just fall in on itself and implode and nothing would work. Okay, 2 cannot be equal to 10. Well, for this to be true, 2 would have to be equal to 10. It's not. 2 is not equal to 10. It's false. So here's the question I'm going to ask. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to remind us what we just said about solutions. Okay, we're looking for the solution. What is the solution? What's the solution to this equation? Here it is. We're saying it right here. It's the number that if you substituted for h, both sides would be equal. All right? So we come to this problem. 
and we're trying to look for the solution. We're looking for a number that we can plug in for n that would make both sides equal. Who thinks there's a number out there that you can plug in for n in this equation, plug in for n, and both sides will be equal? Who thinks that it's out there somewhere, there is some value of n, we just haven't found it yet. Well, once we find it, then it's there. It's somewhere out there. It's somewhere out there. Okay, who says there's no way, there's no value of n that you can plug into this equation that would make both sides equal? question. Are you asking like, is there a number in front of n? That's no, gonna no is there a number that you can plug in for n? Oh. It would make both sides equal. No? What tells you that? Because I already solved that. We already found out, <coughs> we already found out that if this equation were to be true, if there were a value of n that we could plug in, 2 would have to be equal to 10. And we can subtract 1 from both sides, and, and 1 would have to be equal to 9. And 0 would have to be equal to 8. Like, all these things that are impossible would have to be true. All right? So, and, and 1 would have to be equal to 5. So 1 would have to be equal to 5, and 1 would have to be equal to 9. That can't be either. Right? So, no, this, this can't be. It's not true. It's false. So when it comes to finding a solution, can we find a solution? Can we find a number that plugs into n that works? No, we cannot. There is no value of n that would make this work. We found that, as Trevor said, we already solved that. We, we proved that it's not possible. Right? We followed correct steps. We did the same thing to both sides. We used a distributive law. We added 15n to both sides, which is completely legal to do. But then the 15n's, all of the, va the variables get eliminated, and we've come out with 2 equals 10, which will never be true. No matter what you put in for n, 2 has to be equal to 10, which it cannot be. Okay? It's false. So how many solutions are we going to be able to find? None. No solutions. Let me give you an equation that has no solutions. It's a little bit easier to see if there's no solution. How about, I'm just making this up, x equals x plus 1. Is there any number you can think of that you can plug in for x for that to work? Could 5 be equal to 5 plus 1? No. Could 2 zero. be equal to 2 plus 1? Could 0 be equal to 0 plus 1? Could negative 5 be equal to negative 5 plus 1? No. Right? There's some statements that can't be satisfied. We can't find numbers that will work in this equation. We cannot plug in any number that would work for x. Okay? So this also, this simpler one, has no solution. We can do the same kind of thing here. We can subtract x from both sides and get 0 equals 1. 0 would have to be equal to 1. Adding nothing to this would have to be the same as adding 1 to it. That can't be. That couldn't possibly be right. All right, so now we're going to do something very similar, but not the exact same thing. This is 24. 12y plus 6 equals 6 times 2y plus 2. Right, so I'm just going to this in a similar manner and try to find your solution. Let me ask you a number as you start, or ask you a question as you start. I'm not looking for a number as, as the answer to the question. I'm saying, what is the solution to this equation? Or another way to ask is, how do you know you have the solution? Plug it in. Plug it in. And not just that, though. You plug it in, and then what happens? Equal. Both sides are equal. You plug this number in, the solution, into the equation, both sides are equal. That's how you know it's the solution. So, just a little side discussion as you're working on that.
Anybody getting something funny again? Yeah. Yeah. What are you What are you getting? Six. Six. Just six. Six equals six. Six equals six. Well, that's true. Okay, that is different, and that is true. Let's just uh, quickly see how one might come up with that. Well, y equals six or plus or plus six, and then I guess you subtract twelve y from both sides. What I'm doing there. Subtract 12y, subtract 12y, same thing happens. Eliminates the y's, eliminates the y's, you just get 6 equals 6. But this is different than the previous example because what? What's different about it? They're both 6. They're both 6. Nathan. Okay, so what I did was, hold on. Okay, I'm uh, minus 6 from both sides before I did um, like the distributive thing. You know, like, yeah. Okay, so you did this. Hold on, hold on. Let me guess what you did. You subtract 6, subtract 6. You got 12y equals 2y plus 1. Yeah. Anybody see something wrong with that? Derek? Yeah. Anybody see anything like more descriptive? Trevor? It was a negative 12. Oh, that's an equal sign. Oh, okay. <laughs> if you subtract the one that's an 11 and two can't go into 11 equally? No, it's, it's things not going into other things easily is not a reason for it being wrong. It's the first people there for a reason. The parentheses are there for a reason, yes. But I haven't really done anything to the inside of the parentheses, right? But I did, I took this six minus six. What is six minus six? Zero. It's zero, right? And what's this six doing to the parentheses? It's multiplying. It's multiplying. Yeah? It's distributing, it's multiplying. So by some manner of reasoning, that should be zero times that, right? Here's the thing. You're trying to cancel out this 6 that's multiplied by the parentheses by subtracting 6. You can't do that. You can't do that. Right? They're not the same. They're not inverse operations. You want to cancel out a multiply by 6. How do I cancel out a multiply by 6? Divide. Divide by 6. So subtracting 6 will cancel out this 6 because 6 minus 6 is 0. But these 6's can't white interact, not in any convenient way at least. So, can't do that. We do what we did, we can get six equals six. You can subtract six from both sides here, get 12y equals 12y, that's obviously, yeah, 12y does equal 12y, of course it does. Of course six equals six, so this is true. Let's go back to this step, 12y plus 6 equals 12y plus 6. We're looking for the solution. What's the solution to an equation? It's a number that you plug in. Both sides are equal. One. It could be anything. I could plug anything in for y. If I take a number, multiply it by 12, and add 6, it's the exact same thing as taking that same number, multiplying it by 12, and adding 6. It could be 1, it could be 2, it could be 3, it could be 4, it could be 5, it could be 0, it could be negative 12, it could be any Because I'm doing the exact same thing on both sides. Okay? So how many solutions can you think of? Infinite. There's an infinite number of solutions. That's what the book is going to call an identity, right? An identity means it's just something looks exactly like the other side. It says not only are they equal, but they do the exact same thing. Multiply by 12, add 6. Multiply by 12, add 6. Okay. Is there a question for Um. In the previous algebra class, we had almost a half an hour to work on homework. In this class, we have two minutes. Guess what the difference was? 